We've got the whole crew together as we cover Ohio State with our instant analysis from Ohio State. There's something that doesn't feel right. Unbelievable effort from him today. Is EJ Liddell going to crack the first team all Big Ten? I think he can be the guy. I'm not trying to start a quarterback controversy. He seems to have the durability. He certainly has the toughness is the question on a lot of people's minds here. Welcome to Buckeye Breakdown. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to a very special edition of Buckeye Breakdown. We are live at the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, the most precious place in this incredible game, Uh, and it happens to be here in the great Buckeye State. I'm Brendan Gulick. If you're watching this after the fact, we are joined tonight by one of the all-time great Ohio State Buckeyes and one of 10 Buckeyes, who is also a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Orlando Pace, our guest. Thanks for spending some time with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Anytime we're obviously in the, you know, football heaven is what a lot of Hall of Famers like to call it. When you walk through this building, you see so many great uh, football players, the history of the game, uh, you know, so it's a special place. And I, it never gets old. I still feel good anytime I'm here uh, at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Boy, there's so many things we can chat about. Um, you're in town because of uh, a fun afternoon. So let's just start right off the top. I know I know we need to make sure people are well aware that uh, you, you got quite a golf game. You had a chance to work on that during COVID. Uh, we played 18 holes together at Firestone Country Club this afternoon. Uh, and I want to make sure everybody knows that you carried us for a couple holes on the back. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm glad you said that. Uh, uh, so, yeah, obviously it was a fun day just to be back in Ohio and then to play at Firestone, which is a beautiful, beautiful course. And they get a chance to play, you know, a couple holes decent. So, I'm, I, you know, it's one of those – golf is now one of those passions that I love to do since uh, the pandemic, one of the few things that we could do outside. And it really helped me, you know, work on my game. And, and you know, obviously uh, I, I got bit by that golfing bug. So I enjoy it now. Uh, like I said, we, we enjoyed a, a round of golf today. So it was, it was, really, it was really fun. Yeah, a really special day for sure. And, and you're here with – uh, so many other guys who are forever enshrined. Uh, your memory will be honored forever, well long after you're, uh, you're gone. I, I know five years ago was, or I guess at this point six years ago, was a little while ago, um, but still 2016 was not all that long ago for your, for your induction ceremony. Uh, what are your favorite memories from that day, and, and uh, what do you still reflect on when you think about that weekend? Wow, for, for those of you that don't know, that day is kind of a whirlwind. It's so many things happening. You're trying to worry about your speech, make sure your family's good. So you don't get a chance to really partake in a lot of the festivities because it's your day. They're, they're moving you from event to event. So uh, for me, the day is so special. Uh, you know, obviously starting my career here in Ohio, and then ultimately ending my career here in Canton, such a special feeling um, to be a part of a, a group of men, over 300 men, that, that the best that ever played this game, to be in that room, to be a part of that group, um, I can't tell you how special it is. You know, certainly one of the greatest offensive linemen in the history of our game, but a guy who was Ohio born and bred. And, and I guess I want to take you back to the beginning. You know, you're, you're a kid in Sandusky. When did football grab you? When was this a part of you that you knew, man, I, no matter where I go, I want this to be a part of my life? Well, football kind of chose me a little bit, uh, just for the simple fact when you're a kid in, in junior high, you're 6'5", 300 pounds, everybody is just fitting that you play the sport, right? <laughs> People are looking at me crazy or weird if I don't play. They're like, dude, you got to play something. Uh, but, you know, obviously um, playing the game, uh, my uncle, all my family members, they really introduced me to the game. We played in the neighborhood around some older kids. I kind of loved the game from that standpoint at the time. I didn't think I'd be an offensive lineman. I thought I'd be a running back or somebody, some skilled position. But obviously, I outgrew that that portion of it. So I was a little disappointed initially when it was like, oh, you got to be an offensive tackle. I was like, oh, man, I can't score any touchdowns, any of those things, man. So it was just a, it really just it, it, it really one of those things that at some point in high school, I think my, my sophomore year, I felt, I felt like football was going to forever be a part of my life. Uh, and it, it's kind of worked out for me. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, who, who did you have to try to twist somebody's arm to see if they'd let you run the ball? 
Yeah, my coach wasn't having it. I'm talking about from, from Pop Warner to high school to even college and pros. We're like, hey, let me just let me get a tight end tackle oh, eligible. Hey, they're like, no, they'll take your knees out. My old uh, Jim Hannafin, he's, just, he's my pro. Uh, he was with the Rams for a number of years. No, no, they'll take his knees out. We need him. We can't have him. I'm like, come on. I'm an athlete, man. I can, I can run. I can catch. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, so that's one of the things that once that dream, that, that ship had sailed, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be the next Michael Jordan in basketball. I played a lot of basketball in high school. That just didn't work out for me. And uh, so football was it. So, uh, you know, obviously you had an opportunity to play what I consider the best university in, in the country at The Ohio State University and live out my dream. And that was uh, and that was awesome for me. Before we talk about your professional career, let's let's go to Columbus for a moment. You get an opportunity to play for Coach Cooper and um, you know, you, you played on some really, really good Ohio State teams that maybe led up to what a lot of people associate with now, the, the younger crowd that sort of got grabbed when the 2002 National Championship happened. Um, and you were part of the building blocks toward those moments. When you think about your time at Ohio State, what are the special memories for you? You know what, I, I often tell people outside of my wife, my, my family, my kids, being at Ohio State for those three years were the best time of my life. It was almost scary. It was almost scary because everything went perfectly for me. Uh, you know, coming in the freshman year, being freshman a year at the Big Ten, you know, my sophomore year winning Lombardi, winning, you know, Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year, all the great awards, nothing, it, it, was, it was perfect. Uh, for me, just uh, not not a ton of adversity. Uh, really honed my skill. Really became a uh, you know alignment and really enjoy playing the position. Uh, you know, obviously with the pancake blocks and all that that comes with it, it was it was really just a, a really you know a special time in, 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 in my life again. And I keep using that word special because I, you know I've, I'm really fortunate to have a a pretty storied career, and I'm happy that there's so many people that that that. Uh, that helped me along that way. Coach Cooper, a lot of those guys on that staff, a lot of players. So really excited to be a part of the Ohio State tradition. I find it really endearing that you recognize all these years later how special some of those moments were when you played at Sandusky, when you played at Ohio State, before any of the stuff professionally worked out for you. Um, when you consider your journey and, and exactly how things sort of played out for you as a youth, as a college kid, and, and then certainly when you went to the NFL, how much of that do you reflect on and think, gosh, I was where I was supposed to be when I was supposed to be there, whether or not it was my plan or somebody else's plan? I do. And, and it's funny, we're sitting here in the building, and obviously when you go into the Hall of Fame, one thing that you do as a player in preparing for your speech and just you get a chance to reflect on everybody that's helped you along the way. Although I was standing on this stage by myself, there were so many people that helped me get to this point. I've been, I've been tremendously blessed with size and talent, but the discipline of coaches, my parents, my family, all those played a part, all those people played a part in my journey in getting here. Uh, I'd be remiss not to mention those people in my speech or even when I talk about uh, reflecting back on my career. Let's go to the to the NFL. Uh, how about draft day first? You know, th things for a lot of guys are a little nervous, and, and I don't know what the emotions you felt leading up to the draft were like, but I'd love your perspective on that whole process and then obviously, the you know, finding out you were the number one pick in the draft and, and uh, a guy that the Rams wanted to build their franchise around. What was that time like for you? Well, it was it – was, um... It was one of those things that you really didn't know. Um, the Jets had the number one pick initially in 1997. Uh, Bill Parcells was the head coach. I go in and meet with him. He doesn't give me a clear-cut answer if he's going to draft me or not. So we go through the draft process. I, I, I take a couple visits to uh, a couple teams. Uh, I went to New Orleans. Um, I went to Oakland. Oakland moved up to number two to select me. Um, and then about a week before the draft, uh, Dick Vermeil called me and said, hey, we're moving up to number one and we're going to draft you. And I'm like, from that point on, I was like, man, this is great. Offensive lineman being drafted number one um, in the NFL draft is really a dream come true. You don't even think about that at the time. I think Ron Yeri was the other player years ago that, that was uh, drafted number one. 
Uh, so I was excited. Um, it's every player's dream to ever play college football, to be that guy, the first name they call is yours. So, uh, again, one of those milestone moments in my life that I look back and say, man, at that time, you were the best player in the draft. Uh, and I had never even taken a, a trip to St. Louis or I knew Coach Vermeil because he broadcasted a lot of our games. But um, it was just an exciting moment for me. When you think now about the situation that you came into with the Rams, the leadership there, the coaching staff, and ultimately some exceptionally talented guys who are also here uh, enshrined in Canton. You know, you guys had one of the most special teams truly of all time. No hyperbole about that. Um, I, I don't want to put you on the spot to ask your favorite teammates and stories and things like that because I'm sure there's too many to count. But uh, when you think in particular about the Super Bowl year, what stands out to you? It was just. Um... You know, it was just a, it, it was one of those phenomenal years that we had. Uh, nobody heard of Kurt Warner. He was back in groceries a couple of years before that. And it was really, when you think of that team, we got better. Coach Vermeil was our leader. Uh, Coach Mart was the offensive genius at the time. But it was a bunch of guys that was coming into their own. For me, it was my third year. I needed to really insert myself in my leadership role and the type of player I wanted to be in the league. I was challenged throughout that year because I had success in college up until that point. Uh, although I thought my, my second year in the league was really good up until that point, I wanted to make a name for myself. Uh, we, we trade for Marshall Falk. Isaac Bruce is already on the team. We, we draft Torrey Holt. Uh, so it was, it was just a time where we were all young guys, no ego. We came together, and week by week we got better and ultimately won the Super Bowl. I, I find it so fascinating that social media and technology have changed the game now compared to where you were when you when you won the Super Bowl. Really not all that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but from a technological perspective, it might as well have been, you know, an ice age. How much more difficult do you think it would have been to be in a professional locker room and to stay focused and to, to not have all the other distractions with social media and these appearances and, and that other stuff going on? Did you feel like you could just kind of focus on football? Well, I think, uh, you know, obviously it's just been a shift with technology. Uh, we all had distractions back then, whatever it was. <laughs> Don't let anybody fool you. Uh, years ago, um, there was just different things that distracted players. Sure. It's still about focus, though, right? Even the guys today, the guys that win championship, they still have a certain level of focus that's needed in order to win a championship. Everybody has to come together as a team. That hasn't changed at all. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's just a different – it's shifted to social media and everything else, but uh, those distractions have always been there. <laughs> that's a really honest answer. That's a really honest uh, answer. Uh, and, and I'm not a social media guy whatsoever, <laughs> so it would, it would be easy for me to jump on social media. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's been tons of distractions that players have been dealing with for years. We're going to talk Ohio State with Orlando Paste, our, uh, our guest on Buckeye Breakdown here in just a moment. But when you walk in the room here in the hall where all of the busts are lining the walls, the lights are dim, people are walking around, and sometimes there's some conversation, but a lot of times it's quiet because it's, it's kind of the emotional place inside this incredible museum. Um, you know, people come here because they, they want to feel what they felt when they were younger. And they want to, you know, if, if you're a younger kid, you want to dream about what things used to be like and what, what you could shape. When you walk into that room and you see some of the guys you played against or, or idolized growing up, how do you contain your emotions when that hits you, you know, in, in I assume, a pretty special spot? It is. And I, it, takes me on, it takes me back to when I was 13 years old, had a chance to tour um, the Hall of Fame, and walking in that room – you just see the guys that you you heard of and, and the guys that you know that you know that you watch play or, or thought they were great players and they they are um, and then you dream as a kid of being in that room right a kid from Ohio man I want to I want a bronze bus I want a gold jacket all those great things that come along with being a Hall of Famer and it's just that's where dreams really started to take place for me so to walk in that room and and I still, I'm still at awe because I see a lot of guys, a lot of legends, uh, especially in particular my class, you know, Kevin Green, who's no longer with us, but that we shared a special moment in our class. So I, every time I'm in the building, I have to go take a look at the bus, make sure everything's good. And uh, I think John Madden said best. He thinks at night the bus kind of talk to each other. 
But uh, for me, it means real legacy for me. Uh, and I say that because my grandkids can always come here and see, you know, their grandfather or, you know, for the next, you know, well past our lives that, uh, you know, my legacy can live on here in the Hall of Fame. How, how cool that um, the NFL was founded in Ohio and, and some of the all-time great people in this game, not just players, coaches, front office members, visionaries, uh, have roots in the Buckeye State. It's, it's really special, and, and we certainly don't need to uh, explain that to people that are uh, um, intimately familiar with, uh, with Ohio State in particular. Okay, let's go back to the Buckeyes here. Um, your perspective, I assume, has changed a little bit because now you're not just an alum of the program. You're the father of someone who's in the program. How has that been for you? It's been great. Um, as a dad, for me, I just try to, I try to, you know, give advice when needed. I try to stay out of, you know, the X's and O's. Obviously, I'm a resource for my, my son and, and, and excited that he's a part of that program. Being a walk-on is tough, but uh, he, he's still enjoying the grind, the process, being in that locker room, wearing those colors when he get a chance to, work, uh, to, to run out on that field. So as a dad, all I can do is support that. Obviously, I'm a little biased because I love Ohio State. <laughs> Uh, so obviously, uh, it gives me extra incentive to go to games, watch games, and really support. More nervous when you put the pads on for the scarlet and gray, or watching Jalen do it. You know what? I'm, I think for my kid, I think for me, you, you kind of look back. It was fun for me, uh, but I just want him to the, the lessons of the game, man. I'm telling you, for any kid that's never played football, it's just the lessons of football. I want him to grab those. Those are life lessons that I still live by today. The discipline the commitment, everything it takes to be a, a collegiate athlete, academics, all those things. So I just want him to enjoy that process and be uh, Jalen Pace and not necessarily Orlando Pace's son. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cool that um, he has a chance to sort of carve his own path for sure. Uh, and I know your, your younger son Landon right now is going through the recruiting process. Whether or not he becomes a Buckeye is certainly uh, still up to his decision. But what's it like to be the dad of somebody in today's day and age going through recruiting where everybody wants to have photo shoots and, and you know, pictures with this guy or that guy and access to this and that? Uh, it, I, I assume it's a little different than it was back in the mid-90s. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Uh, the recruiting is different. And I learned this with Jalen. Jalen was, for, unfortunately, during the COVID year. But with Landon, it's so much different, you know, obviously with all the rules back in the day when I was recruited, I'm from a small town, Sandusky, Ohio. These coaches had to actually come find me. <laughs> and now I find myself having to market my son or my son having to market himself to universities to get a chance. But uh, the things that, that, that um, obviously he, he has an offer from the Ohio State University, as you can tell, I've been brainwashing him since birth. But uh, you know, I want I wanted him to uh, to really carve out his own path. Again, uh, he's a tight end. He's work he works extremely hard. Uh, so obviously, what the next couple of years look like, I don't know. As a dad, all I could do is support him. Uh, keep buying him Buckeye gear and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, I want to be sensitive to the fact that you have a son in the program, and so I don't want to ask you too many deep X's and O's questions or, or opinions about today's Ohio State Buckeyes. But um, you've obviously got an opportunity to be close to the, to the program. You are always welcome in Columbus. What has it been like both with Coach Meyer and then now with Coach Day and the way they've embraced you and, and welcomed you into the program? Well, I, I think about uh, both Coach, Coach Meyer and Coach Day, both are – I th they welcome guys, former players back um, and, and with open arms for me because I think that's really good for the program. Um, I was at the Notre Dame game last week and there were so many guys that came back. That's really good for the program. It shows that the program is healthy. They love their former players. Uh, and that and I, and I probably helps get some recruits as well. But uh, uh, the tradition, guys need to see, touch, feel former players just to make sure that that dream was real for me. When I was a recruit, I, you know, I saw Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson. Corey Stringer was a big inspiration in my life. And to see those guys actually changed my life. So I think they continue that tradition, invite guys back to the program. And I think that's only going to strengthen our, our program. We're in an exhibit here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame where uh, a lot of today's players who have accomplished some crazy cool things within the confines of individual games have had their jerseys and their, their helmets uh, in some cases, you know, uh, coaches or referees have their jerseys or headsets in here. Um, 
this is kind of the room in the Hall of Fame where the players that are dreaming and maybe more on the cusp of having a chance to play in the National Football League, these are the guys that are immediately at the front of their mind because it's tangible. They can see them. They can feel that connection with those guys. When you were at that phase of your career, who were the guys that you most looked up to and thought, God, if, if I could block for him or if, or if I could play for that guy, uh, the guys that really resonated with you? You know what, I got to be honest. We had such a, a talented group in St. Louis. I was playing with the best running back in Marshall Falk. <laughs> sure. I was playing with the best quarterback in, in, in Kurt Warner, receivers, Torrey Ho, Isaac Bruce, all those guys. So, you know, obviously our goal was to win championships. Um, you know, obviously we went to two Super Bowls, but just our, our – our unit was so special for me. You know, we didn't look outside for anybody else, but uh, there were some linemen, you know, Anthony Munoz, Jackie Slater, Willie Rove, all these guys that's in the Hall of Fame. I wanted to be, be you know, they were, they were the, the trendsetters of the goal. They were actually the goal. So that's what, that's what we all aspire to be. Orlando Pace, our guest, a couple more questions here for him. And um, I want to go back to Ohio State for one second. The the current season is two weeks in as we shoot this. We've just wrapped up week two against Arkansas State. Uh, this is a Monday evening, and uh, the Buckeyes are getting ready to, to play Toledo in week three, and the Big Ten is, is coming in hot <laughs> there shortly after. Um, what have you seen that you liked from this year's team through the first couple of games? You know what? I, I like our defense. Uh, I think that uh, the defensive coordinator has done a great job. I see them blitzing more, putting a lot more pressure. Once those guys get comfortable with the system, um, I think I think you know mid year that they're going to be flying around, making a lot of plays, making a lot of stops. Uh, we got tested a little bit last week with with Arkansas State a little bit, but that was good for them, uh, just because they need to fill out you know what that defensive scheme looks like and become better. Uh, obviously, I love our offense, our, our young guys, our receivers. Um, you know, you know. I think CJ does a great job controlling the offense, his leadership skills. So, obviously, when we get back to full force and get those guys healthy, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, tough to deal with. I caution people because people want, uh, you know, those electric plays that we've had over the past couple of years. This isn't last year's team or the year the year before. This is a, a totally different team. It's talented. Uh, love to see them. If anything, run the ball more. Uh, don't become so pass reliant on, on guys. And, and if you run the ball with those running backs that we have, it really opens up that passing game. All right, I'm, I'm testing my own uh, off the top of my head knowledge here. Were you and Marvin Harrison in the same class enshrined? We are, yes. So, so did you meet Marvin Jr. perhaps at a young age? Have you known him for a while? It did. I'm telling you, when we got in and I saw him um, that he committed to Ohio State, I called him and I, and I actually saw him physically. Like, yeah. So in 2016, I'm like, oh, he's a good sized kid. I said, Marv, this guy has turned into like, <laughs> dude, like, a, like he got like three, four inches taller. And, uh, you know, obviously they were raving about him. The coaches were raving about who he was, man. So to see him have success like he had last week, hopefully that just continues and he just gets better. And it's funny, I saw Marv at the Notre Dame game and I said, man, I'm telling you, your son's going to have a big year. Uh, so I think I think with that offense and the way they push the ball down the field, I think they're, they're, he's going to be one of those, those special players that, that wear scarlet and get gray. I uh, I did see tonight that there are only three other receivers since at least the 1950s that have had a 140 yard plus and three touchdown receiving game twice in their career. Uh, and Marvin Harrison Jr. just became the fourth this past weekend with a, a really, really good game. And frankly, in my opinion, I thought he had a fourth touchdown that they uh, called it incomplete. Oh, yeah, I pass. agree. I agree with you. Uh, it, uh, it was certainly close. Let's wrap with this. Um, the former president of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, David Baker, made famous the knock on the door in, in sort of telling guys, hey, it's not. this is not just some club. Like, we are going to – recognize you and honor your legacy forever when you think about the the special nature of what you accomplished and and now the responsibility that you have to protect the game its past and its future um, how do you try to go about that how do you try to keep football burning alive in people's hearts and make young kids want to play and make old fans never forget what they've seen 
You know what? What's, what's great about it? Um, obviously, we you know, as being a Hall of Famer, high character, high integrity, all those things that come. It's just not on the field play. Uh, once you're in the Hall of Famer, there's a certain responsibility you have to the game. We all love the game, being Hall of Famers, but being in this, being here, this museum, this this is where you can see the history of the game. It not only teaches us about you know you know the player, but the person as well. So when you see you know Walter Payton sitting on the wall and and what he what he's meant to the game and and all these great players and great people. Uh, that's a part of it, it kind of tells a story. So if you haven't been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame and you're a football fan, you should at least take it in because you'll be amazed uh, to see the history of the game, all the great players that's ever played this game. Uh, it's a special place. I, I've been fortunate to see lots of different Halls of Fame in different sports, different walks of life. There is something so special about this place. The, uh, the way they have, you know, held on to some of the the old things, the jerseys, the helmets, that stuff's all cool, but the technology that they've used to remember games gone by and and the game of life exhibit here, oh, that's awesome. it, 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 it's, it like gives you goosebumps. It's wicked cool when you go in and you virtually sit in a locker room and Vince Lombardi is giving you a pregame pep talk. There's nothing like it. Nothing else like it. It's, it's unbelievable. So, Orlando, you've been super gracious with your time. Uh, I, uh, I, I hope your golf game continues to look as elite as your football <laughs> career did. We had a wonderful time this afternoon, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you again in Columbus real soon. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Orlando Pace, the great Buckeye, the all-time great uh, offensive lineman in Columbus and certainly in the Pro Football Hall of Fame for good reason with what he accomplished throughout a uh, terrific career. Really glad you joined us on Buckeye Breakdown. Thanks for, uh, for hanging out with us here for a bit tonight. You can find our stuff on our YouTube channel. We would certainly appreciate it if you'd subscribe there. Uh, and then obviously, wherever you like to find your favorite podcasts in the Apple Store, in Spotify, and Google Play, it's uh, available in lots of places. So hope you'll subscribe there. And for all the latest news and info on the, uh, on the Ohio State Buckeyes, check out BuckeyesNow.com. For Orlando Pace, I'm Brendan Gulick. We'll see you again real soon.